so much for joining us on another edition of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa, number 43. Woohoo, 43! <laughs> My name is Nick Bachuski. And I'm Andrew Miller. And of course, we're the podcast that talks to the people, places, events, and music that make Ottawa the incredible city that it is. And before do we get to our special guest, Glenn Gower, why don't we check this out? <laughs> Come too soon from the ground. I watch as you swing by from a pendulum. I'll come just a moment too late to break Ooh, your waterfall. Don't you call me down to earth. This is all damn edge control. Suddenly we've come away. So that there, of course, was Cardboard Crowns, who you'll be able to see October 18th at the live, uh, the finals for the Live 88.5 Big Money Shot. So 60 bands started. We're down to about eight Ottawa bands. Make sure you get out there to see them. Yeah, Some they, great sound. They're good. They are, they are sounding really good. It's a little different. It is different. It's not yep. something that you hear every day. It sounds kind of like Sublime or Red Hot Chili Peppers, but I mean, they've both been around forever, so... I mean, you're not uh, you're not hearing bands like that come out every day. That's for sure. Brings a lot of excitement. Three bands shared ten thousand dollars in development cash. So yeah, and, one, and one of the bands that we used to have on the show had won that. Good luck, Assembly. Yep. Shout out to the boys. Yeah, absolutely. So we're here with Glenn Gower, who pretty much everybody in Ottawa has heard before, but might not know just the person behind that. So he used to be the organist for the Ottawa Senators just up until recently. So that person playing doon, 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 doon every single time, <laughs> that, that was Glenn. So whether you liked him or loved him, that, that was the man behind the, behind the mic. And before we learn about that and about OttawaStart.com and Crush Improv, all great things, why don't we get to know a little more about Glenn and uh, about Stittsville, where you're from. We haven't had many people from Stittsville on yet. Stittsville, yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, you're very welcome. Um, very you know, I, I've I've grew up in Ottawa, lived in Ottawa my whole life. Uh, grew up in Nepean, knew the Nepean Sportsplex. Went to Carleton U, lived downtown, and uh, about uh, eight years ago started working for the Ottawa Senators and decided to move a little closer to the arena, and that's how I ended up in one of Ottawa's most exciting suburbs. It is. <laughs> well, it's growing quite rapidly out there. That's for sure. It is. I think we're up to about twenty thousand people now. Jeez. And within the next ten years, probably be up to about seventy thousand, which is about the size of like like a Sarnia type of thing. So it's a pretty yeah. big, uh, pretty big community. And traffic must be a lot better coming from that end of the city to get to the. Uh, I'm going to say Senseplex, but uh, the Canadian Tire place now. Is Canadian. That what's that's right. That's Canadian right. Tire Center. Yeah. Pretty place. quick commute. Yeah. That's right good. on. How has it grown? When how many people were living there when you start first started in Stittsville? Uh, well, I lived in, in Canada, uh, west end of Canada, for a little bit, and uh, but there's been a big boom in Stittsville right now. Just a lot of families coming in, a lot of development happening. Mm -hmm. The place where I live now is actually a stone's throw from the arena. It's it's uh, you walk in ten minutes. And if when I first moved out to the area eight years ago, if you told me that I could be living within a five or ten minute walk from uh, Canadian Tire Center. Uh, I wouldn't have believed you, but it's really, really come along. There's there's uh, homes going up all over the place. There's a new outlet mall going up uh, nearby. So a no, lot that's of great. How's that happen. coming up? Uh, well, I think it's due for uh, for next spring, spring 2014. Have you been monitoring the, uh, the construction? I'm not a big shopper, and uh, <laughs> other than the odd road closure, that's about the extent of my uh, monitoring of what's going on there. Right. Well, what? you also have ton, tons of restaurants that have been popping up uh, left, right, and center out that way, too. Obviously, with that amount of population uh -huh. increase, you're going to need them. So, yeah, for Any sure. Any favorite spots that you like uh, uh, heading out to? One of my favorites is uh, Poco Pazzo. It's uh, Hazel Dean and Maine. Poco Pazzo. What type of food do they have there? Uh, it's, can you imagine Italian food with a name uh, like that? It sounds like it, shouldn't really? it? Yeah. 
<laughs> Another one that opened recently is uh, Fresco. They have a location on Elgin Street. Yeah, yeah, we've been there before. It's really good. They opened up their West End location just uh, down the road from me. And, uh, you know, we had a, a big fire in Stittsville a couple of weeks ago on Main Street. A great old heritage building uh, burnt down. For years, it was home to a restaurant called Louisiani's, kind of a Cajun place. It was yeah. great. And uh, it was under renovation. The folks who owned the, the Gastro Pub in Wellington West, yeah. they were going to be opening a, a new restaurant out there. But you know, there's easily uh, four or five other. Other uh, really good restaurants opening up, so starting Burgeon to become place. Oh, yeah, right on. Absolutely. More options to enjoy food before uh, going to a Sens game and yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. When, when did you start, uh, or how did you get involved with the Senators? Uh, I started with the Senators uh, nearly 20 years ago. I was still in high school, and I got the gig playing the organ. It was uh, one of the last years they were at the Ottawa Civic Center, and I, I was filling in for the main. Uh, organist. I was the fill-in guy and kind of worked my way up to where I was doing that pretty regularly. And then uh, um, uh, just as I was coming out of university, the uh, Ottawa 67s were starting to expand. Jeff Hunt had just bought the yeah. team there, and he was looking to make a splash and do a little bit more with the entertainment and uh, really creating a, a you know full family atmosphere with music and video and so on. So I worked there for a few years and then found my way back to the Senators, uh, uh, worked for about eight years as their director of game entertainment, so producing and directing all of the live entertainment there, the, the oh, organ, cool. the music, the video, announcing, national anthems, mascots. What were some of the things you're proud of that you brought to the, to the Sens there that are still in existence today? Well, I think a big thing is uh, is getting the big new uh, video scoreboard, mm-hmm. the Bell HD screen. That was a couple years ago, just in time for the NHL All-Star Games. So that was pretty big. And uh, just really putting a focus on the fan, you know, trying to move away from uh, from w- what I would say are some of the some of the cheesy sponsorship things, you know, yeah. kind of game show things, and really focusing on on things that are about the hockey game and about showcasing the great players and uh, letting the fans have a really good time when they're there. Uh, uh, any any like what what were the memories? You did a Memorial Cup at the. For the 67, yeah, did you get to work that one? I was, I was there for the 99 Memorial Cup, the first year that Jeff Hunt had the team. That was an amazing experience. Uh, I was there. The, the team won an OHL championship, I believe, in uh, 2005. And then at the Senators, I mean, I uh, couldn't imagine all the great opportunities we had there. We had uh, the team had the Stanley Cup run in 2007. Yeah. We had the uh, World Juniors in 2009, where Canada not only won gold, but some of the best, most entertaining hockey. And I've you ever got seen. to oh, play the sure. organ for those games. Actually, I was producing at that point. So that I wasn't, one Canada wasn't playing US the organ, game, but, eh? Yeah. I, that, well, I remember that. New, was that the New Year's Eve game? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just, just back and forth and come from behind, and it was incredible. So you've seen a couple of hockey games then? <laughs> I've seen a few hockey games. <laughs> Do you have a tally at all of how close you might even be? Or like, I was uh, trying to figure out. I mean, it, it, it's not a 1,000, but it's certainly in the in the high hundreds. Yeah, That's fantastic. Yeah. What, uh, what about any players or coaches have spe- special requests to you? Like, uh, you know, if I get in a fight, I want this song being played at this time. <laughs> Uh, you know, like baseball walk up entrance music. You know, the the players and coaches, for the most part, you know, they, they focus on hockey. But, you know, I, I know uh, when I used to work for Brian Kilray at the Ottawa 67s, uh, he, he was a bit of an old school guy. I don't think he appreciated some of the, the dance and, and uh, modern yeah. stuff we played. He would have been happy if we had played uh, Anne Murray for the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> Now, is there a big separation between the uh, like when you're when you have music at games, you have the the organ, and then there's also a DJ, is there not, or were you in charge of it all, or? Yeah, uh, so so as far as music goes, we would have a, a DJ who plays pre-recorded music. Yeah, uh, he's got a laptop set up with uh, with a piece of software that's got custom screens. So if there's a fight, he's got a whole screen with fight music, or uh-huh, if cool. he wants to bring up you know rock music, he's got a whole screen yeah. there. Uh, there's the organist. Uh, probably the ratio between DJ and organist is maybe two or three DJ for every one organ. And they're used for different things, too. Like, the organ's yeah. really interactive, gets people clapping along. Yeah. Uh, we also b- bring in a, a trumpet player from time to time or a live uh, fiddle player, too, just different live elements, too. And sometimes we'd have uh, some local bands. And we've had, uh, when I was at the Sens, we had uh, Colorado in for a game, so uh, and a few other... Uh, they played live music during the game? Yeah, yeah, during uh, intermissions or stoppages in oh, play. that's cool. The uh, JW, JW Jones Band as yeah. well. The, uh, it's been on our Playing show. some blues for us, so they were in there, there for a game as well. Uh, so the so the organ isn't going away. Even though you have, you have left, it, it 
there's still going to be somebody taking over? Well, I, 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 yeah, there's an organ player there for sure. And okay. of the 30 teams in the league, just about all of them have an organist. So as much as technology has come a long way and as much as you hear a lot of uh, uh, popular music, rock music, playing uh the, the, there's still a place for the organ it's you still really, need it yeah. it's like church it's tradition <laughs> what? Yeah. you just gotta have it, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. A, church wouldn't be church without the organ yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> that's a, that's a that's a bit of a stretch but whatever all right so i guess we can get into starting to talk uh, about ottawastart.com you're the man behind that you've been doing it for a very long number of years what is ottawastart.com and why should everybody in ottawa bookmark it and make it their home page on uh when their browser loads up in the morning. Well, Ottawa Start is a, a news and information and events website updated uh, pretty much every day. And uh, if you're looking for what's happening in Ottawa, it's a place to go, whether whether you're looking for event information or uh, whether you're looking for uh, road closures or for uh, just any information about the city. It's not so much about, you know, hard news like mm -hmm. like murders and crimes and things like that. It's it's information for people who live here and want to know what's going on on a, on a day to day basis. And they can interact with you on Twitter when uh, they have a problem. It's you behind the Twitter, so yeah, I do most of the writing for Twitter, and uh, there's there's Facebook as well. We've got What's a, the uh, Twitter handle? Twitter handle is uh, Ottawa Start. At Ottawa Start. Yeah, we don't. So uh, yeah, I do most of the writing, and then some help from uh, from other freelancers and and friends and uh, different people in the community. Speaking about people in the community, uh, Andrew King. Yes. So you, you, when he announced that he was going to be starting the cartoon on one of our episodes. Yeah. And so he's been doing a weekly cartoon. That's right. Uh, Andrew did a, a weekly cartoon about a year ago uh, called Grumps, which yeah. was a strip. And uh, that, that went for about 16 weeks. And then a couple weeks ago, we launched his newest effort, which is called Mr. Loaf. And it's kind of inspired by the far side or Herman, kind of a nice. one panel Love comment. Far side, yeah. yeah. Um, They're really good. So every Monday morning, we've got a new episode of Mr. Loaf. And, How's the reception uh, been on those? It's been really good. It's been really good. Andrew has a unique sense of humor and a, a different way of he a does. different way of looking. He's got a different perspective on on life, and uh, it's been really <laughs> fun to watch uh, to see each each strip as he emails them into me. And, and recently, uh, Andrew and you have been uncovering a, uh, a shipwreck that's been going. It's been killing the Twitter waves on in Ottawa recently. Yeah, I've seen Andrew tweet about it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. If you could tell us a bit about what what we're doing, are we discovering the next Titanic here? <laughs> <laughs> well, full credit to Andrew on that one. He uh, he's just so fascinated by Ottawa history, and uh, he was searching around and doing some reading online, and and thought he saw something that he might want to investigate, and he went down to the Ottawa River one day earlier this week, and uh, he discovered an old boat which he thinks is from uh, sometime in the 1800s or early 1900s and and he uh, sent me an email before he set out and he said I, I think I found something stay tuned you'll be really interested and then uh, just after lunch I got an email from him saying the subject was discovered in all caps <laughs> with exclamation points and and uh, he was just so excited because he he actually found what appears to be a pretty much intact uh, uh, ship that's just lying on its side in the Ottawa River, not too far from downtown. Oh, wow. And so uh, what I've been helping Andrew with is getting the word out there and trying to see if there's anybody in Ottawa who might know the history behind this. I mean, it's 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 sitting there. And, and as a result of that, he's done some uh, uh, some media stuff with the Ottawa Sun and with CBC. And there's a, a Ontario uh, historical group that tracks uh, old shipwrecks that's helping out. So I don't think there's an answer yet as to what it is, but uh, Andrew's certainly getting closer. So no, has, has dive teams gone down yet well you know what it's it's so visible it's actually up over the water so oh. like uh, you just walk through the muck and you can actually climb on top of this thing so how it, oh, how crazy. has it not been discovered yeah. in the last thing? <laughs> well, uh, from, our water level is really low <laughs> <laughs> well from 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 what we can tell like people know it's there but it's just kind of they take it for granted yeah and it could be with a lot of the rain we've been having maybe it's it shifted a little bit and then yeah maybe the water level just exposes it at this time of year so it's oh. one of those things where it's maybe a lot of people have walked by it for for years and years but nobody's ever had the curiosity to find out what exactly it is or how it ended up being there and that that's where uh andrew comes in and he's uh doing some sleuthing and trying to figure it out yeah we're oh, gonna that's you, cool you might find some treasure probably not that's probably long gone yeah. but there is some original paint on it and it's always good to learn more of where we came from where ottawa came from and who else better to to learn than him right well we had a, a thing uh, last night on ottawa start where uh uh, someone had posted a photo. It was a historical photo, believed to be from around 1941. It showed, showed some soldiers walking down a road, marching in Ottawa, and he was trying to figure out 
uh, where this location was because he wanted to go and see if he could photograph it, uh, what it looked like today. But he had no idea where it was. So mm -hmm. uh, I posted that on the Ottawa Star blog, posted it on Twitter. And uh, um, big one. Well, it's a big yeah. loss. We're outside here. <laughs> I yeah, think that was a grasshopper. Even. <laughs> we're, we're outside at the Brook Street Hotel. Uh, yeah. This is options. The options patio overlooking the beautiful golf course. Yeah, I believe that's the nine, ten, eleventh hole of Marshes. Yeah. It's, it's a nice right. day. It's a nice it day. Is. Beautiful day for this. Yeah. Anyhow, by the end yeah. of the night, we managed to uh, track down a probable location. And uh, I was just, I'm always fascinated how when you're on Twitter or on social media in Ottawa, there's always people who are, are eager to help out and help you find something, whether it's uh, the origin of an old photo or, you know, we often get questions like, where can I find a, a great uh, Ethiopian restaurant or something? Yeah. And, and you put that question out there to the readers Boom, and they done. always come up with something. You're yeah, great. it's great. And, it, and it's always good interacting with the restaurant restaurants interacting because they're people too and it, it's a uh, very good for real-time information mm -hmm. and uh with lost ottawa is gaining a lot of steam now too oh yeah on facebook on yeah. facebook it's it's gathering hundreds of and we hope to have the guy that's behind that because that's always interesting to you know to find trends that he's seen lately uh, see what people really enjoy looking at yeah. and see if we can do more uh preserving of like the cool history yeah, that we have and it's great so idea. people so people are a little more proud of where they come from and that kind of stuff. So. Absolutely. All right, why don't we uh, take a quick break, listen to some more Cardboard Crowns, of course, October 18th, Live 88.5, Big Money Shot, Ritual, Nightclub. You want to get down for that. You're going to be seeing sure. eight of the best bands that Ottawa has right now. Past winners include Colorado. Uh, Good Luck Assembly. Good Luck Assembly. They had a different name back then. But. Autumn's Cannon from last year. So yeah. lots, lots of great bands. So you want to make sure you're out there for that. This song's called Panic. We'll be right back with Glenn Gower. They just smile and stare Cause they know they come out at night Can't hear the bark over the bite Still the people in the bright daylight Don't defend yourself Don't you quote your right Well, no, I'm pressed Cause there's nothing to see This is a record by Soul the world of mine's and TV This is no panic Cause it's for me Not a deadly disease Because I'm murder and the rape Now the focus is on a panic All right, so we're back with Glenn Gower. That was Cardboard Crowns Panic. Of course, see them. 88.5, big money shot. You always wonder where bands come up with these names sometimes. You know, they, they cardboard with, Crowns. Did you find they, out? They wear the Cardboard Crowns. They wear crowns Cardboard Crowns on whenever stage. they play. Yeah. Well, there you go. Isn't there right. a Google or a website where you can go and make your own? I've always had a great Probably. Ottawa. A great Ottawa band name yeah. would be Ian Black and the Five Day Forecast. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That would be very unpredictable what they would play, probably. It would be a six piece. <laughs> <laughs> Some days it would be just terrible. Right? <laughs> just You don't know what you're going to get, right? Yeah. All right. So, Glenn is also the incredible keyboardist for the Crush Improv. Uh, if nobody's been out there to see Crush Improv, have uh, seen them at the... Uh, at the Wales, New Walesbone uh, Elmdale Tavern. The Elmdale, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or seen many of their special events around the city. Definitely make your... It's such a great family time to get out there. And uh, so we'll hear more about it, Glenn, if you can tell us more about Crush Improv. Yeah, I've been with the group for, I think, three years now. And uh, uh, the the every first Monday of every night, we used to be at the Elmdale Tavern. And uh, now we're at the Heart and Crown. So first Monday of every month, we do oh, right a on. show at when the did, uh, when did Heart that and change? Crown. Sorry. Uh, changed about uh, just at the start of the summer. The Elmdale underwent renovations. Yeah. And the folks from the Whalesbone took over. And uh, we actually needed a, a bigger venue. We pretty much outgrown it. So now we're at the Heart and Crown. The one on Preston? Uh, Note the one, the one right, right in the downtown. Byward Market. It's actually the Mother McGinty's kind of the stage okay. at the back where they have the, the bigger bands play. Okay. Uh, so we're there 8 p.m. first Monday of every month. And we've been doing a lot of other shows. Just wrapped up at the end of August uh, a, a series called My Summer Crush at Arts Court, which is a, uh, nearly three weeks of, uh, of shows and workshops. Uh, there's shows coming up at the Gladstone Theater soon. We're doing one this Friday night at uh, Centerpoint Studio Tonight? Theater. 
That's Next tonight, week. isn't it? It's no, it's yeah, today. Today's Friday. <laughs> Holy cow. I know. Usually we do this show on Thursday. It's throwing us all off. Tonight. Tonight's a bit different. It's a show called Spotlight On. So uh, we invite a special guest out. They tell stories, and then the cast recreates those stories with a bit of a comedic twist to it. The guest tonight is Robin Bresnahan from CBC Ottawa Morning. Okay. So that'll be a pretty good show. So she'll oh, yeah. uh, start off with a story, and then they interpret it, in, and will the crowd be participating in that as well? Yeah, there'll be crowd participations. All you, you never know exactly what's going to happen. For, for some people that... Do, don't know what improv is can you explain a little about how your show is set up and and how the crowd is a lot more involved than you know a typical yeah like like i hear improv and all all, like i just picture aspiring actors and actresses uh you know, going out and start. trying to try a lot of them get their yeah, start in there, yes. trying to get a feel for it. Well, if you've ever seen uh, Whose Line Is It Anyways on TV, nope. uh, Colin Mokri and, and Drew Carey were in that years Hilarious, ago. Hilarious, yeah. Uh, very funny show. It's, it's very similar to that. It's completely unscripted. Uh, usually there's a little bit of a challenge or, or a game or a setup to it. You always ask the audience to uh, help contribute to it by giving their own suggestions. It just gives it a, a random factor and keeps it really fun and fresh. And then uh, you have, you know, two hours of improvised uh, theater, usually pretty funny stuff, and uh, uh, yeah, you never usually. know what you're going to get. Well, it's <laughs> oh, improvised, cool. right? So sometimes, yeah. sometimes the scene will totally fall flat, but more often than not, it ends up being a really, uh, really fun thing. That's cool. Have you have you noticed a lot of uh, transition from people, you know, coming and watching? To all of a sudden they're participating as well, or uh, actually yes. One of the uh, one of the things about Crush Improv is uh, a lot of the cast members uh, really put an emphasis on teaching and and building the community in Ottawa. So uh, they run workshops and they do training and uh, and giving new performers an opportunity to get on stage for real and and uh, give them that experience. Oh, that's cool. And we have uh, we're very lucky in this city. We have uh, Liz Greer Collegiate wins the. Uh, the Canada Improv Games almost on an annual basis. Uh, there's many other high schools that do the improv games here. Uh, I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> that B loves me. Just, it's good. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, as well as the at the Carleton, there's improv groups, University of Ottawa improv yeah. groups. So a lot of fun there. Yeah. And the, the person behind it all is the keyboardist that you know sets the tone. So I always think it's the hardest job to always switch on a whim. To I love it kinda. from a from a creative outlet. Um, you know what? Uh, playing for the organ for hockey games, I had to learn a lot of songs: TV theme songs, movie theme mm-hmm. songs, pop songs. And you learn a little snippet from each one. And at the the hockey games, just you have to be very quick on your feet. The whistle blows, you don't know when it's going to happen, and you go. And a lot of those same principles kind of apply to what I do at the improv. So uh, it's kind of a, kind of part that and part uh, thinking like a silent movie organist yeah. or piano yeah. player might have been in the in the early part of the last century, just trying to find the right mood and set the right mood and uh and accompany what's going on on stage you know you don't want to be front and center you want to be a little bit behind but sometimes there's a little musical thing that can happen that can take the the scene or the comedy in a different direction that's it it's like you watch a movie and uh it's usually the background like take horror movies for instance i mean they wouldn't be half as scary if that scary music wasn't in the background there you go so yeah you definitely need that sort of thing where did your Where'd your uh, keyboarding and uh, organ playing and whatnot start off? I uh, I took piano lessons as a kid. My grandmother was a piano teacher and and always encouraged uh, my family to get into music. And uh, I think it it really came from when I started to realize I could play by ear. I didn't have to read music. I could hear something on the radio and just figure out how to play it. And it kind of took off from there. Uh, When I was in high school, did some... uh, uh, piano accompaniment for uh, musical mm-hmm. theater and rehearsals and stuff and and uh, you just you know kind of really really learned how to it's one of the really important things in improv is you just you keep going you can't really stop and if you make a mistake you, you just move on yeah. and so that kind of work was really uh, good to get some training right, right. on well we got, that's good to hear I like that you know you started off with you know being a child and taking the piano lessons I think that's still something that, you know that parents want to kind of get their kids into different things and you know i used to always think okay you're gonna send me to piano lessons where's that's gonna lead right (laughs) well it's good to know i mean it got you some pretty good gigs over the years then like a little bit of luck a little bit of skill and yeah i I think uh uh you know it it is a pretty cool thing just playing the piano as a hobby when you're able to to make a little bit of a little bit of extra money off it too it's pretty cool for sure And, and we have the comedy awards or comedy showcase coming out next week right yeah, it's a big, uh, I guess you call it a festival here yep. in Ottawa, Canadian Comedy Awards. Crush Improv is uh, involved uh, in a few ways with it. A, a big one is uh, 
Thursday night, I believe that's October 3rd, uh, we're doing an improv show with some of the, the uh, comedy uh, all-stars at Arts Court, so I'll be uh, playing with that one. How and much is that? Uh, uh, I don't know how much it is, but it's certainly well worth the price. Okay, okay. It is. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> okay. And so a lot's else? going on. I mean, uh, beyond Crush Improv, there's just going to be very funny people yeah. all over the city and a lot of events going no, on. Mark so there, gonna it's going to be, be kind of like a, a mini Just for Laughs, if you will, in Ottawa sort of thing? Like there's going to be different stand-up comedians? Performing at different uh, yeah, it's locations. all it's all different types of, of comedy and celebrating the best in Canadian comedy. Yeah, right on. So get out there and uh, get out there and view that next. Well, I week. love stand up, so that's going to be good. Yeah, so we'll check that. It's a busy weekend next weekend, and uh, yeah, so I guess we'll go over events that are going on this week. Yeah. Thank you so much, Glenn. That yeah, was a lot of a fun. Lot. Uh, I, I think a lot of people learned a lot. From yeah, that. thanks for having. Oh, me. I had one more question. Yes. Okay. Did you leave the Ottawa Senators because? Alfie did. <laughs> no, it was, the other, it, was, it was the other way around. Uh, he, other way around. he left first? No, or he, no, you left first he and heard then I he was left. leaving. Oh, I gotcha, yeah. I gotcha. Wow. So we, you heard it here first that Glenn yeah. Gower is a reason Alfredson left yep. the Senators. Direct result. So uh, if you're upset, just go to Ottawa Start and yeah. Twitter. start Ottawa, Ottawa Stop. Start. No, Ottawa yeah. Stop. That's good. <laughs> All right, so events going on this weekend. We got Oktoberfest in Barhaven tonight. It starts. Amanda Rayom is going to be headlined tonight. Tomorrow, Colorado. That's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, for sure. That's uh, before Oktoberfest again next week. Yeah. We've we got the food truck rally, the first ever food truck rally. So you want to see uh, which one of the food mini food trucks that we have in our fine city. I know they have 11 that are going to be out there at Rochester and Pamela between 12 and 4 p.m. Uh, there's a $10 entry fee, but the $10 is well worth it because you're going to be helping send a kid that might not uh, generally be able to afford going to college to learn culinary arts and become the next big restaurant in our city. You're going to help support that, and then you're going to have some great foods and see which the what the ultimate uh, food truck is going to be for you. There's a bee seriously going after know, Andrew right now. He might me. not be making any of these <laughs> events this weekend. Sweet, like You me. also have One World Film Festival. Uh, thought-provoking documentaries on global issues so yeah. that's going to be fun to watch if you want to stay indoors tonight the ottawa charity ping pong tournament at the cabin uh, that's always a great time i'll be helping out at that it's only 40 dollars. gets you drink tickets a meal two games ga uh, games guaranteed oh, that's pretty good. so anybody can go and play anybody can go oh, and play. right on uh, rory gardner is going to be there playing tonight lots of fun there you got the home and design show at the ernst yeah. young center so uh you want to make additions to your home, uh, yeah. anything like that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Culture Days is going on, is an event going on across Canada. You'll be able to uh, see it across the city. Lots of free activities going on across the city. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of buildings that are not normally opened up are opening up, giving tours, and you're going to be able to learn from some of the people that are going to be there. there you go. Uh, Carp Fair, don't forget that Carp Fair. It was the next thing on my list. Hundred, oh, was it? 150 it was. Uh, year anniversary, that's crazy. I think I'm going to try to hit that up tomorrow it's, afternoon it's, as well. It's quite a time. Can I, uh, can I also suggest yeah, a you shameless always. plug? Yeah. Ottawastart.com slash events. Yeah. Every Wednesday we publish a roundup. Some uh, different people from around the city suggest their favorite event of the week. So a lot Perfect. of those are on that list. And that's it. I, and I'm too. pretty sure Which we've taken we a few Which from their website. Missed? There's some walks around. There's some. There's always something. Uh, the punkottawa.com right, flea market. That's right. The flea market. Yep. Oh, kind really? Of a cool thing. They've yep. got a lot of. Uh, a lot of kind of do-it-yourself alternative, uh, some really interesting stuff. I'm sure it's That's a cool. Center. I go on. I used, I've been going on punkauto.com for years and years just to check out different event listings coming up. And uh, Ryan from uh, CKCU recommends the Recoilers playing at oh, the Manx. Sunday night at the Manx. Oh, yeah. nice. We've had uh, Rolf on our show before, so it's Rolf's uh, first time playing with the Recoilers, his first band that he talked about on the episode with us in a very long time. Oh, sweet. So that. Oh, well, there's a lot also of the uh, the Moonlight River Run. Taking off uh, Wakefield. That's on Saturday. Starts at 6 p.m. All right. And before we get this truck coming in right behind us, we're getting skyjacked. <laughs> we're going to get skyjacked. <laughs> All right. So there he is. He's moving fast by us. <laughs> Big changes coming here at the Brooks Street Hotel. You're changing it. All right. So the last song we're going to play is Dick Kings from the Cardboard Crowns off Long Live the King. Uh, next week we have Angie from Angie's Models, so it'll be a lot of fun uh, next yeah. week. And uh, thank you so much for listening. All right, have a good weekend, guys. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. guys. Have a great one. They say that 
Things are looking like they're in control Because the TV and the papers kill the names that they don't want to know But I say Well, there's just one thing that I gotta know Who appointed us the kings to rape and profit off of those below Well, I don't want to come up as an asshole or said you But we wash another blood that off our hands with the blindfold So excuse me if the peak I give you makes you feel a little pissed off They say huh, that we have privatized the industry To give ourselves a few more seconds with the mirrors in our SUVs Well, I'm not gonna tell you to become an alley yeah, Who are a building burning cop car turning preacher From the data simply I suggest we try to fight the selfish church to stay on top 